Hello friends, today we will be discussing about avalanche photodiode. Before this we have seen PN photodiode and PIN photodiode. Today we will see an advanced or improved photodiode that is avalanche photodiode. What is this avalanche photodiode? This is a modified PIN photodiode which incorporates internal gain mechanism to amplify the photocurrent. We have already discussed about pin photodiode in the previous video. Now we will see how this pin photodiode is improvised to get some internal gain in the device and that in turn will give us a high output. Now coming to the modification made in the pin photodiode to obtain avalanche photodiode is that so there were three regions in case of pin photodiode one is p plus one is intrinsic and the third region was n plus region right now here in case of avalanche photodiode there is one additional layer which is in between the intrinsic region and n plus region and this region is p type which is lightly doped in case of an avalanche photodiode the electron hole pair generation that takes place in the intrinsic region. Further, in case of this avalanche photodiode, we are having some internal amplification and that amplification of carrier that occurs in this P region, which is introduced between intrinsic and N plus region. So, this is the region where we are getting the internal amplification or multiplication of the carriers. We will discuss these things in more detail in next slides. Now coming to the structure of avalanche photodiode. First we are having an N plus region. Above that there is a P region. And above the P region we are having this intrinsic region. Further a P plus region is diffused into the intrinsic region. Now metal contacts are provided on P side and N side. So this metal contact is from P side that is insulated by silicon dioxide and this lower metal contact is coming from N side. Now this window region is deposited with an anti-reflecting coating. Here you can see all the things are same as the pin photodiode only difference is this region that is P region which is sandwiched between this intrinsic region and N plus region. Thus, a lightly doped P region is sandwiched between the N plus region and the intrinsic region. Further, in case of avalanche photodiode, the depletion region extends into the intrinsic region and part of the P region. The materials which are suitable for designing photodiodes are silicon, indium gallium arsenide, germanium gallium arsenide, etc. You can see these are nothing but direct band gap materials. Now coming to the operation of avalanche photodiode. This is the structure what we have discussed just now. To operate on photodiode first thing we need to do is light should be incident on the photodiode right. So here if these are the photons of light when these photons are being incident on the photodiode what is happening over here how it is operating so most of the incident light passes into the intrinsic region through the thin p plus region and because of this incident light electron hole pairs are generated in the intrinsic region basically what happens these photons they will cross this p region and they will enter this intrinsic region and here when they are Hitting the atoms, electrons and holes will be generated. So, electron hole pairs are generated in the intrinsic region. The internal amplification or multiplication takes place in the P region through impact ionization. We will understand this in more detail. What is this impact ionization? 
and how it leads to internal amplification but here i am telling that this internal amplification or multiplication that takes place in this p region right so here what we have seen that because of the incident of the photons electron hole pairs are generated in the intrinsic region and the internal amplification takes place in the p region right so just by rotating this in the anti clockwise direction by 90 degree i can draw this like this this is the p plus region intrinsic region p region and n plus region okay and we are discussing about the operation initially also i have told that this photodiodes they operate in the reverse bias condition right so this avalanche photodiode also operates under high reverse bias here you can see that this photodiode operates under high reverse bias generally photodiodes they operates under reverse bias but here the bias applied is relatively higher as compared to the other photodiodes so reverse bias means p side should be connected to the negative terminal of the applied source and n side should be connected to the positive terminal so this is the reverse bias given to the avalanche photodiode now once this is given if we are incidenting photons these are the photons coming through the window as we have discussed just in the previous slide so these photons will cross this p plus region and they will enter this intrinsic region and here we will be getting electron hole pairs right when this electron hole pairs will be generated if the energy of the incident photon is more than the energy gap of the material then we will be getting this electron hole pairs so what will happen once this electron hole pairs are generated over here in this case the largest part of the applied bias drops across this p n plus junction and further this side is connected to the positive terminal and this p side is connected to the negative terminal so what will happen this electrons they will move to the positive side and this holes they will move to the negative side right so electrons are moving in this direction holes are moving towards the negative terminal of the applied source or to the p plus side of the avalanche photodiode now the difference in pin photodiode and avalanche photodiode is this here we are applying a high reverse bias that means the velocity with which this electrons and holes will be drifted that is definitely very high as compared to the pin photodiode and if their velocities are high that means their kinetic energy is also very high so these electrons they are moving with high kinetic energy so high applied reverse bias voltage accelerates the electrons with high kinetic energy now when they are moving with high kinetic energy what will happen in the p region they will strike the other atoms over here and as they are moving with very high kinetic energy they will break some bonds over here and will be getting again electron hole pairs over here so if this electron breaks one bond one electron hole pair will be generated and part of the energy will be given to this further this electron will hit some other bond and will be getting one more electron and one more hole initially this if you'll consider one electron that will generate one electron hole pair further this electron and this electron if they will hit two more electrons will be getting four electron hole pairs so similarly it will get multiplied right so this high energy electrons generate secondary electron hole pairs through impact ionization this process of multiplication of carriers that is known as impact ionization and this secondary electron hole pairs means these are the primary hole pairs which are generated due to the incidence of these photons when these primary electrons they hit some other atom break some bonds and electron hole pairs are generated these electrons which are generated in the p region those are known as 
secondary electron hole pairs and this process is known as impact ionization so because of this impact ionization we are getting a high number of carriers over here and this was not happening in case of pin photodiode right so here we are getting higher number of carriers as compared to pin photodiode this process will continue so chain of impact ionization leads to carrier multiplication and this effect is known as avalanche effect so because of this we are getting a huge number of carriers over here and as per the applied bias these electrons they are moving in this direction and holes are moving in this direction because of the carrier movement we are getting some photo current and this is the direction of the photo current because the current direction is opposite to the direction of the movement of the electrons right so this gives us the direction of photo current and the output can be taken across this load resistance so here we can take the output so as we have seen that the carriers are getting multiplied the responsivity of the avalanche photodiode is high and it has greater sensitivity due to this internal amplification now let us discuss about some of the advantages and disadvantages of avalanche photodiode so coming to the advantages the avalanche photodiode have high responsivity and greater sensitivity for that the internal current gain due to avalanche effect occurs in case of avalanche photodiode the frequency response is also very high in case of avalanche photodiode and the response time is faster as compared to other photodiodes now coming to the disadvantages we require a high operation voltage to operate the device because we require a high reverse bias in case of avalanche photodiode further the output is non linear in nature and the noise level is high in case of avalanche photodiode finally let us look into some of the applications of this avalanche photodiode avalanche photodiodes are used as photo detectors these are also useful in case of medical applications like pet scanner what is this pet scanner over here this is nothing but position emission tomography which is useful for cancer treatment these are also used as laser range finder the most important applications of avalanche photodiode includes optical fiber communication further this is also useful in case of laser scanner so these are some of the applications of avalanche photodiode we'll discuss about the difference between pin photodiode and avalanche photodiode in the next video today we'll stop here thank you if you like the content of the video please press the like button and share the link with your friends further don't forget to subscribe the channel to get the notifications whenever i am uploading a new video thank you all